Hello everybody, my name is Luchara and this is 10 Things I Wish I Knew When I Started Playing Eco Global Survival. Let's jump right into it with number one, upgrade modules. So what upgrade modules do is they reduce the resources needed and the time needed um, when you put them in a table. So for example, the basic upgrade one reduces those both by 10%, upgrade two is 25%, upgrade three is 40%. Upgrade four is 45%. There's also a tier five upgrade that I'll talk about here in a bit. Um, so what you do is you come to a table and there's a module tab. You would just drag it, put it in, right? That's all there is to it. Um, there is advanced and modern upgrades that, have, that unlock later. Every table has this module tab in the game with the exception of the basic workbench and tool bench. Um, but once you're past those, once you're into your actual professions, you're going to want to get these upgrade modules. And I'll just show why here. So if we want to make 100 hewn logs, for example, it would cost 100 uh, lumber and it would take 8 minutes, right? Now if we come over here to this table where we have a upgrade module 2, which does 25% reduction. Predictably, if we do 100 logs again, it only costs 75. And it's only 6 minutes instead of 8, right? And then there's also... Um, the tier five modules are like profession specific. So this is the logging basic upgrade. So it reduces anything that's a logging recipe by 50% and anything else by 45%. So predictably, if we do hewn logs, 54 minutes, boom, that half, it's half as much of both. These things are amazing. You're going to want to get these as soon as possible. Now I will throw a quick caveat out. Um, some tables for whatever reason, um, don't apply to the resources, only the time. So this doesn't have a module. So it's 1200 and an hour and 15 minutes with no module. And if we pop over here with a tier five module, so the time is reduced in half, but the resources stay the same, just an FYI. But most tables get both benefits, Res upgrade modules, get them ASAP, do it. All right, thing number two, um, has to do with some keyboard shortcuts regarding inventory management. So if you come to a stockpile like this, if you just left click on something in the inventory, it'll go either to your hands or into your inventory, depending on what type of item it is. But if you were to alt left click, it will take one and only one. If you were to control left click, it would take half of the stack. See, so then another half, another half. Right, you get the idea. But the big one, the big key that I wish I would have known is if you hold shift, well, okay, so back up. So if you drag, you can move something from one stockpile to the other or, or from your truck to the stockpile or vice versa. But the big one that I wish I had known was if you hold shift while dragging, it takes everything of that type. So that just took all that shell. I can just move all that shell like that. Because I didn't know this one when I first started playing and I was literally dragging one at a time and it was driving me insane. So don't be like me. Be like me now. Current Looch. Don't be like past Looch. Use these keyboard shortcuts to make your life a lot easier. All right. So the next thing is to help people out who are bad drivers like myself. This is actually a couple little few tips in one. Um, the first thing is if you, if you don't like this view, hit F5. It'll bring up third person view. Um, not just when you're driving, F5 will always bring up third person. Um, the other thing is, if you're ever going and you need to stop in a hurry, just get out. Your 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 vehicle will instantly stop if you get out, just like that. It, that can that can be really helpful. Um, the other thing is, let me see if I can get my car to go onto its side here, or my truck. Eh, we're almost on our side. Yeah, I tried. I tried to get it on the side here. <laughs> anyway, if you ever get your car upside down or on its side um, because you went off the road or you logged in and it was like that, because let's be honest, eco servers are funny. Um, you would type free car while looking at the car or truck and it will put it flat. It'll put it on its wheels at least. Like, or it'll try, right? Like, like right here, if I type free car, actually it won't let me do it because you can only do it once a minute. But It'll put it flat. Now, in order to get out of this situation, what you would want to do is put blocks under it and then do a free car and then drive away. But yeah, free car can be very helpful, as can those other two tips for people who are bad drivers like myself. All right. 
on to the next one. Okay, the fourth thing I wish I knew was there are two different types of power in eco. There's mechanical energy, which is generated by windmills and water wheels. Uh, I'd like to point out that this water wheel is not actually functional because it needs to be in running water, and this is an ocean, not running, just FYI. Then there's electrical energy, which is generated by wind turbines, solar panels, some nice green energy there. Then there's a steam engine that burns coal, and the combustion generator that burns oil, or gas, I guess. I think it needs to be gas, not oil. Um, but yeah, so there's two different types. So some early game, the things that need power are going to need this mechanical energy. But you got to be careful when you get to the point where stuff starts needing electrical energy because all of a sudden this isn't going to help you anymore. It's not, it's not going to help. And I think the other thing you really need to keep in mind is it's not backwards compatible. Like I understand mechanical energy can't provide electrical energy, but electrical energy can't do mechanical, if that makes sense. They're, they're mutually exclusive. So you need to keep that in mind whenever you're planning out your setups for anything that needs power. You make sure you check to see, does it need mechanical energy or electrical energy? Because it sucks when you set the whole thing up and then you realize it needs the other energy. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is if you need water pumped, there's two different water pumps. One uses mechanical energy, one uses electrical. So make sure you're getting the right water pump for what you're planning to do for power. Anyway, that's number four. Okay, number five. Now, this is more of an advanced tip, uh, and it has to do with pipes. So there's there's more than one different different pipe in eco. There's iron pipes, there's copper pipes, there's also steel. But for our example here, let's just uh, let's grab these copper pipes. We already have some iron pipes laid out, and you'll notice it will not let me put a pipe there. Well, it'll let me put it there, but it doesn't hook up. Different types of pipes are not compatible, okay? But you can actually use this to your advantage, Say, for example, I want it to run iron pipe out this way from here, right? Well, what's going to happen is once I get here, it's going to connect to this one. I don't want it to connect. One of these is input, one of these is output. And I know what you're thinking. Well, Lutz, just run this pipe straight. I, I get what you're saying, but bear with me. Because there is situations where, you know, there's going to be things in your way. Um, but what you can do is you can just use the other type of pipe, right? So if I use copper pipes here grab some copper pipes so I can show it now I run copper pipes here whoops did not want to go vertical there look at that it works I can run both pipes just like that it's great because and again this situation is not a great example but I mean these pipes are the same they work the same doesn't matter buy whichever one's cheaper but what I like to do late game if you're like smelting and advanced smelting you're going to have more than one of these blast furnaces, which have an input and an output each. You're going to have a throth flotation cell, which also has an input and an output. And I think it's a lot easier to have all your inputs be iron, all your outputs be copper, or vice versa, or steel pipes, whatever. But just using different type of pipes makes it so much easier to manage your pipes, in my opinion, with late game. Just something to think about. Anyway, on to the next one. All right, before I get on to the number six thing, um, if you're enjoying this video, if you're getting something out of it, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, join my Discord, especially if you're interested in playing multiplayer on one of my servers. Uh, I host them regularly. All the information you need to be in the Discord, so check it out. On the number six has to do with um, finding things in stores. Now, you could run from store to store to store, but nobody wants to do that. Let's say I wanted iron bars, right? If you type iron bar into the chat, it'll come up as a link. Press tab to bring your cursor up, mouse over it, and you'll see I can buy it at whatever Russian person is, free stuff, or I can sell it at Benji's. Gives you a good idea of what to do with that. But a lot of people do that, and that's fine. But if you're looking for multiple different things and you don't want to be spam in the chat, you know, because depending on what server you're on, they may not like you spamming the chat with that stuff. I think you can do alternatively. You see, hit Y to bring up the economy viewer. If you hit this little uh, gear, I guess it is, next to item, you can filter by name. So I can go iron. Say I was looking for iron tools. There they all are. Oh, well, here's iron bar. So let's say it's like, oh, I'm almost, I'm also curious what iron concentrate is. So you can do both of them. Hit submit, and it'll show you iron bar. Now, nobody's buying or selling iron concentrate, but there you go, right? Let's see, is anybody... Is anybody buying or selling iron tools? Now I'm kind of curious, right? Let's find out. 
And the answer is yes. Lots of people are selling, or a couple people are selling iron tools. But that's that's my go-to way. If I'm if I just want to quickly find one thing, I'll put it in the chat. Um but if not, you know, I'll do the why, hit the gear thing. The other thing with this is also for like say steam trucks or different crafting tables, if you mouse over it, it will tell you uh there are 24 steam trucks in the world and where they are. If you ever lose your steam truck, a little bonus hint for you here, you can find it like this, or it'll tell you what, how far away it is and in what direction, right? So Warp Dave's steam truck, for example, is 655 meters southeast of me. Good way to find your own steam truck if you get if it gets lost, though. Anyway, on to the next tip. All right, tip number seven, um, farming. A lot of people join servers and they want to be a farmer. But the thing you need to keep in mind with farming is the farming skill itself doesn't do a whole lot. It's really three skills you need to be a farmer. You need farming, you need gathering, you need fertilizers. Other than that, or you need to be working closely with someone. The farming skill itself, it just does all, really, it should be called seed making. Because that's what the farming skill does. It's, it's about making seeds. That's really all farming itself does. Obviously, fertilizers, fertilizing skill makes fertilizers. And gathering greatly increases what you gather. Anybody can walk up to the ground, hoe it, and plant a seed. You do not need the farming skill or the fertilizing skill or the gathering skill. That's it, right? All farming does is make seeds. And a couple other things here. Let me show you exactly what a farmer makes. All right, so the farmer at the farming table can make seeds, more seeds, fertilizers, which actually the fertilizer needs to make. It's not the farming skill. Um, I believe cotton thread is a farming thing. So that is something. That is something. And I think they do one furniture item. It's down here somewhere. Salt basket. That's it. It's all the farmer makes is seeds, essentially. So just keep that in mind. I just, I've seen it on multiple ones of my servers where we have too many farmers. People join a server and they see there's only like one farmer. Now, and again, this greatly depends on the size of your server, obviously, and the size of your world. But somebody with gathering skill, if they're very active, out harvesting wild plants it greatly limits how many actual farmers you need so be very careful before you take the farming skill because <laughs> i mean i guess i'm just saying this because my last server we had way too many farmers and it really kind of ruined those people's experience so i don't want that to happen to anybody else so just be very cautious about taking the farming skill please all right so before i get into this next tip uh, i just want to mention that I'm on patch 9.4.5 as I say this. Obviously, this is an early access game and things could potentially change because uh, I feel like some of these may be out of date by the time you watch it if you're watching this years in the future. Particularly, this next tip uh, might be out of date and this is what I call level zero skills. So, for example, if we look at fertilizers, at level zero, you can make yourself a soil sampler. So as long as you know fertilizing, as long as you've read the scroll, you don't have to take the star, but you do, you do have to have read the scroll to get the level zero benefit. So this is a big one. The soil sampler is nice because you can go to like trees and see how close to being fully grown there are before you cut them down. For example, um, mostly the level zero benefits are just like uh, research papers, right? Which are nice. It's nice to have that as an option. Um, because a lot of research needs, you know, like any advanced paper or any modern paper. So having extra options is always good. Um, so yeah, so the other one, it would be paper milling. So look, I haven't read the paper milling scroll yet. So I do not get this level zero benefit. So let's read the scroll. Okay. So I've read paper milling. I have not taken the star though, right? But I have the level zero benefit. So I can now, I couldn't before, but I can now make paper which is right here. I can make paper if I want. And now, don't get me wrong, paper is largely useless in the current game, um, but you can make like a bookcase or something with it, I think. But other than that, but yeah, you don't need to take paper milling to make paper. As of right now, this is probably going to change. They're probably going to flesh out that paper milling skill at some point. But as of today, right now, the end of January, 2022, or middle of January, I guess, 
you can make paper at level zero. Level zero skills. Keep that in mind. All right, so tip number nine. It's just a little building tip that I picked up for people on my servers. So this is what a doorway typically looks like in eco. Now, you could put an actual door in there, or you could do a double door like this, which I like because it just gives you a little more space to work with, right? But the real, you know, the real smart solution is this. Use ladders to make this massive doorway. Because typically, like if you try to do a double door way like this with no doors, this doesn't count as uh, enclosed anymore, right? Like let's, if I take this door off, like let's just verify right now, this is contained within a room. If we take this door away, Wait, oh, it still is. Okay, take this door away. <laughs> there, I was going to say. Not contained within a room anymore, right? But it works. It This, it still count, counts as a room, right? Because the ladder is considered to have, uh, to be, the ladder, the game considers the ladder to be this whole block wide. It's clearly not though, right? So it's just nice. Like you could use ladders to, to make this like really open concept house or workshop. And I really liked it. Um, shout out to the first person I saw do it, which would be Manny on the second time I ran a server, but I'm not a great builder. So anytime I can pick up a little tip like this to do something cool out, out of the box, I love it. So I just wanted to pass this one on to you. One more tip to go. Okay. The last piece of info I want to pass on to you folks is this game is playable in single player. It can even be quite enjoyable. I played it through the whole way, destroyed the meteor in single player. I mean, this is my single player world right here. If you want to check that out, I have a whole let's play for it. Um, link will be in the description to the first episode. So if you want to play single player, hey, have at it. I don't blame you. But if you do play multiplayer, be prepared to work with other people. Like if, if you think you're going to join a multiplayer server and then go off into a corner all by yourself, you're not really going to be able to do it unless that server has insane XP rates, in which case you might as well just play single player at that point, right? But if you're playing multiplayer, you're going to need to interact with other people. And look, if you want to be antisocial, you can still be antisocial, but you will need to visit people's stores. You will need to depend on other people for things. If you want to be by yourself, play single player. This game is meant to be co-op. Again, playable single player, but 100% it's best co-op. I mean, I've, I've had four multiplayer servers at this point. I, I mean, I've made friends off of it. We've played other games together. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a really fun game, multiplayer. So if you're interested in playing multiplayer, you want to check out my server, join my Discord for that. But if you got something out of this video, if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. But most importantly, be good to each other. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.